So in this video, I want to give you a quick overview of what Azure Sentinel is and some of the benefits for you. Now, Azure Sentinel is an Azure service. That means that you'll need to go to the Azure portal to locate it. You'll also need a paid Azure subscription uh, to enable it. So it does consume some costs. Now, we get to this by going to portal.azure.com and you look at the front page there. You may see Azure Sentinel as I have here. Otherwise, you can go up to the search here and just do a search and you should see that Azure Sentinel is displayed. Just click on that. Now, when you initially go in and set this up, you'll be required to create a workspace. So think of a workspace as a very large database in which all the signals, uh, security signals can be put into. So you just need to nominate a workspace or create a new one. When you do this will be where all the logs, all the events uh, for your environment end up so they can be analyzed by Azure Sentinel. In this case, I've already set up my workspace. So let me just click on that to uh, go in and you'll see here I now get my summary page. So this is the overview page we see of uh, Azure Sentinel. It's giving me events and alerts over time. It gives me an indication of the amount of information it has ingested. Now this ingestion is coming from uh, connections. Across the top here, you'll see the events. So these are all the events that it has taken in, any alerts, uh, any incidents. Now, what we want to do to start off with is actually start getting uh, data into Azure Sentinel. Well, we do that by going down on the left-hand side here under configuration and selecting data connectors. Now, our data connectors connect to both on-prem and also cloud services, but they also connect to non-Microsoft cloud services as well. So I see we have an option here to connect to Amazon Web Services. I've already connected it to things like Azure Active Directory, uh, Azure Identity, and so on. Now, if you want to make a connection here, all you need to do is select that connector. And then on the right-hand side here, you'll get the option to open the connector page. We will go in there and follow any steps that are required to uh, basically make that connection. So if I wanted to uh, connect the Azure Advanced Threat Protection, I would simply select that and hit the connect button. Now remember that the steps needed to configure uh, different connectors will vary. So again, you'll find all of those instructions uh, inside that option when you uh, select it. So you can see here there are 39 uh, in play there and I have six of those currently connected. Now, an important thing to remember here is that there are costs associated with uh, Sentinel. Typically there are two costs. There is an analysis cost to an analyze all the data that's coming in and also an ingestion cost. Now the ingestion cost is what the cost is of bringing the data into that log analytics workspace, uh, the database to do uh, then the analysis on top of. Now the good thing is is that most Microsoft Cloud services like Azure, Office 365, SharePoint and so on, the ingestion cost is typically zero because of the fact they're already in the Microsoft Cloud. There's not a lot of cost there. Now there would be a cost obviously for a third party web service like Amazon, or if you wanted to feed in logs from, for example, workstations, which can be done uh, in this environment as well. So generally, my advice to you to start off with would be is just connecting the Microsoft Cloud um, connectors here, and that shouldn't incur very much cost for you at all. And if we go down here, I would suggest the ones that you're looking for down here are probably the Office 365 uh, connector there. So once we have that um, all set up, we have data now being uh, pulled into our Azure Sentinel. Now, the next thing we need to do here is go to analytics. Now, what analytics do is basically, these are the rules which are run over the day. This is the queries. This is the searching that is done over uh, our information to determine uh, if there's anything that we need to worry about. So this is looking at the signals that we get from multiple locations, then making a decision as to whether this is something we need to pay attention to. Now, the great thing is, is that Microsoft gives us a number of templates. So if you click on rule templates there, you'll see that um, I can go in and select from a range of templates. If I go in here, for example, and se select one that is currently not in use. So then what I would need to do is basically go through here and scroll to the bottom. And I would then have to uh, configure or add that in depending on uh, the uh, options that are available to me. So again, you'll see here in this case, I have the option here to create a rule. So I would select that. This is now going to take 
the pre-configured rule that Microsoft has um, provided for us. You'll see here that this is the heart of the Azure Sentinel environment. This is basically the query that is running across the data inside uh, that Log Analytics workspace. But thanks to Microsoft, they've already done it for us, so we don't need to do anything. You'll see that I get a number of uh, options here around a automated response. So not only can we monitor the rules, but we can choose to take an automated response. So this is typically something that we use uh, using what's called a playbook, which is typically a uh, PowerShell uh, script. So we're not going to do any of that. We're just going to go through and we're going to create this new rule. We're going to add it to our environment. So this is now being added and our active rules has jumped up to 83. So what this means in essence is that I am now running 83 uh, queries across this data as it's being ingested regularly uh, to determine if there are any uh, things that I need to be alerted to or potentially take actions on. So again, it saves you having to go in and analyze all these different uh, event logs, you can just run uh, these rules. Now you can obviously go up and create your own rule if you want. It can be a scheduled rule. And again, we can pull those from uh, Microsoft. So my advice to you to get started is go into analytics, select rule templates, and then work through those which make sense. Add those, create those rules uh, in your environment. And then that will give you, uh, again, that ability to uh, analyze that information. If you want down here, you'll see that we also have playbooks. So playbooks are typically the automated response here. So the idea is we can create a new playbook and that can take an action based on uh, whatever you want when an alert, for example, is detected. A lot of the information too will be available uh, in the Sentinel community. So there's lots of stuff on GitHub. There's lots of playbooks. There's lots of uh, rules out there that others have created besides Microsoft that you can bring into the environment. Now, if we go down to the final option here under configuration, which is settings, you'll see this is where I can determine uh, the pricing of Sentinel now. It is, again, based on the amount of data that is being analyzed today, and we have different options here for uh, 100, 200, and so on. But down the bottom, you'll see that the tier that I'm on is the pay-as-you-go tier. So, again, I'm just paying for that, and we'll talk about the pricing uh, a little bit down the track here. So... Once we've gone through all that, you'll see that we then get data uh, ingested into Azure Sentinel and we can then have it perform uh, analysis and give us these sort of reports. Now, when it analyzes the data, you'll see here that it is reporting to me four incidents, so four things I need to pay attention to, and they are over here on the right. So one of these is a failed login from an external user. So again, this is uh, basically a rule that is that I have set up that is custom, that is saying, okay, if I get a failed login to my tenant, I want to know about it. So now that I have that, let me go in and investigate that. And now we get the uh, Graph Explorer. So we can drill into all the entities here. We can go and look at these IP addresses, for example, look at related alerts, um, all sorts of information here. And again, that will vary depending uh, on what the alert is. We've got some options here across the timeline, info, and so on. So extremely powerful to allow us to drill into those incidents in more detail. Now those incidents again come from those rules that we put in place in the analytics. So that's looking at the fact of, okay, this could be a problem because um, someone's logging into this, then trying this, or this is failing. So those incidents are generated by the analytics and the rules that we created. Now, what we can do here is we can also start aggregating information and then reporting on it. So we have something here called workbooks. You'll see again, the workbooks uh, have a number of templates. One of these, for example, is the uh, Azure AD audit log. So if I've select that, I've already had that set up. I'll go down here and select the option to view the saved workbook. So think of the workbook here largely as like a dashboard, a Power BI style dashboard, again, over that data in our log analytics environment that uh, Azure Sentinel is providing uh, analysis on. So we can create as many workbooks as makes sense. You'll see that there are also ones there for third party services. Now, the final option I'll talk about here is hunting. Now, what hunting is, is that's 
actively going out and looking for anomalies. So that's actually, rather than being passive and, and doing scanning, which the rules work on a regular basis, we want to go in and we want to do this actively. So again, what we can do here is all of these rules, we can go in and we can select for the example to run these queries uh, manually if we want. So lots and lots of queries down here based on the rules, based on all the stuff we've been building into Sentinel that we can run on an ad hoc uh, environment to again get those results. But I think the most powerful option here is once we have in this case 82 rules we can go up here and we can select the option to run all queries. So let me just move this across so we can have a look at the results column here. So if I push the run all queries, so this is going to run all 82 queries immediately across my data and spit out the results. So you'll see here how quickly it came back with results and I can go in here and see if there's anything that I do need to go in and worry about. So again, you've got the uh, analytics and the rules which are run on a usually a scheduled basis once a day or whenever we can go in and we can do active hunting and basically run that uh, whenever we choose and once we've got this set up we can easily go in and run all the queries quite quickly and then get a result that we can analyze so extremely powerful uh, in what we can do pull us all this information and analyze it quickly now, of course, as I mentioned, underneath all this is the Log Analytics workspace. If you want to, you can still get into that. You can work with that uh, as a normal Log Analytics workspace if you want. But again, think of uh, Azure Sentinel as sitting over the top of uh, that data lake of information and then providing this sort of analysis uh, over the top. So extremely powerful tool. Now, one of the most common questions about Azure Sentinel is, this is all great, this is fantastic, but how much is it going to cost? Well, again, if you go to the Azure Sentinel pricing page, which I've done here, I've converted uh, my currency here to Australian and the data center to Australia East, and I've gone down to the pay as you go option, which is what I'm paying. So you'll see here that I'm paying basically $3.99 per gigabyte of ingested data. So I'm just paying as my go on a per gigabyte basis. All right, and you'll see here that you can also uh, adjust that depending on the capacity, the amount of data you expect, which is generally quite high there. So my advice is start off with the pay as you go and generally you're going to uh, be a relatively small amount of money. Now, in this case, you'll see that what I've done with Sentinel is I've set that up to be all Microsoft Cloud services. So again, there aren't ingestion costs. Now, the ingestion costs would be above and beyond the analysis costs. So the 399 per gig we're looking here is the analysis of the inbound data. So that's $3.99 uh, per gig of uh, data that we're analyzing. Again, and if that varies, that will go up, but don't forget there may also be an ingestion cost. But because in this tenant, I've set it up to just be Microsoft Cloud Services and nothing else, there's not gonna be an ingestion cost. So if I go in and have a look at my actual cost here, so let's look at the uh, previous month in total. So we've got a full month to look at. You'll see that uh, I drill down into my log analytics workspace and you'll see that the Sentinel cost there is basically less than a cent. So that shows you how cheap it can be to actually use Sentinel. Now remember those costs will vary depending on the amount of data that you want to analyze, so the amount of logs that come in that require analysis and also the ingestion cost. So if you add more logs, you add more services you want to analyze with Sentinel, then there'll be more cost and there may also be an ingestion cost, but you can minimize that cost by, again, focusing on the Microsoft services first, but that doesn't prevent you from, again, also going in, as mentioned, connecting uh, third-party cloud and on-prem options as well. So in summary, Azure Sentinel is an analysis tool that will sit on top of a uh, all the logs that you have for your uh, Microsoft Cloud services, third-party cloud services, and potentially on-prem uh, devices as well. You feed them all into a log analytics workspace, and then you have Azure Sentinel sit over the top and provide analysis. You do this by connecting in your data sources firstly, then setting up the analysis, the rules that you want to run across this data to uh, regularly uh, look for anomalies and provide alerts. And you can also take actions based on that using playbooks if you want. And then what you get is the results here displayed in incidents and you can drill into those. And if you want, you can also go in and do uh, active hunting. So uh, very, 
really powerful product and again generally a very small cost but remember the two costs there are one for the analysis per gigabyte and also an ingestion cost if required so hopefully it's given you a bit of an overview a bit of an idea of the benefits and what sentinel can do for your environment certainly a solution that would scale down to smb as well my advice to you is to set it up and to start slowly use a few microsoft cloud services see what the costs are and then begin to add more as you feel comfortable with this but hopefully that's given you a overview and a way to maybe go in and have a play with sentinel see what it can do but i would highly recommend it as a great way to centralize all the monitoring and logging of um, security events in your environment